Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It is good to be in worship together here at Christ Lutheran Church, and I am so delighted to be able to join you in worship this morning. We're glad uh, to have you here. Well, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Uh, I'm Pastor Dione Stepanek, uh, the assistant to the bishop and director for Evangelical Mission in the La Crosse Area Synod. And so I join you here um, and also bring greetings from Bishop Felix Malpica as well. Um, just happy to be able to make the beautiful drive up from uh, the on Alaska area up here this morning and uh, be able to worship with you all in this beautiful sanctuary. So, uh, just uh, one reminder, your annual meeting is immediately after this service, so uh, make sure that you pick up a annual meeting, uh, annual report in the back, and then uh, stay afterwards for that, that meeting as well. So, as we now center our hearts and minds for worship, we call to mind the fact that the Holy Spirit is with us in this place, gathering us together. I invite you to stand as you are able as we begin with our confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you have called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may aid in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as free and forgiven children of God. Amen. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evil doer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God. My confidence since I was young. I have been saying of you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb you have met my strength. My praise shall be always with you. You may be seated. Christ rose 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. God's word amid the difficult political realities of his time before the Babylonian exile. He is to make God known not only to Judah but also the nations. The first reading is from Jeremiah, the first chapter, beginning with verse 4. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to be all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. <clears throat> See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms. I pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Christians in Corinth prided themselves on their spiritual gifts. Paul reminds them that God gives us many gifts through the Holy Spirit, but the purpose behind all of them is love, the kind of love that God showed us in Jesus Christ. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, beginning with verse 1. If I speak in tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, 
but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. <clears throat> when I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly. But then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these, is love. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Children in worship want to come forward. Aha! Now I get the task of trying to figure out how to mask them with this microphone. Good morning! So, how are you doing this morning? Have you warmed up since you came inside? A little bit warmer in here, right? Um, we've got a holiday coming up in just a few weeks. Do you know what holiday is coming up in the next couple of weeks? Valentine's Day, right? Can you believe it? It's going to be February. That's crazy, right? It's getting us closer to spring, at least. So Valentine's Day. What is Valentine's Day about? Loving people, right? So how do you show love people? You can give them a hug, it's a good one. Get them a card, be nice to them, right? Um, we just heard a reading from the Bible there that talks about, about love. Now, sometimes we think about love, like, you know, especially around Valentine's Day, like, maybe you got a crush on someone, right? Or, or like, your parents love. But then you also know that, like, love is about a lot of things. Like, who do you love? Your mom and your dad, right? Family, friends, right? You can love the church. You can love, you can even love people that you've never met. Which that can be kind of hard sometimes, right? You're like, I don't even know how, how do I love them? I don't even know them, right? That's one thing that Jesus asks us, says, you know, we should love people, which also means that we should do things that make sure that, that they're not hurt, right? That's how we should love the other people. What if, though, someone gets something like, maybe a, if there's some gift that you want, like for Christmas, and you don't get it, but your best friend does? How do you feel? Kind of sad a little bit, right? Are you happy for them? Yeah. But sometimes you can get kind of mad, right? You might be like, but I wanted that. Why did they get that? And I don't, right? But because you love them, you can also say, you know, I wish that was for me, but I'm so happy that you get that because we enjoy caring for other people and enjoy seeing other people um, have good things happen in their lives too. So in our gospel reading, we're going to hear what happens when we forget that we're supposed to love everyone, even when we're not the one that maybe gets the special thing back. Right? And remind us that there are good ways to, to react, right? Like saying, I'm so happy for you, and and uh, being happy for them, and saying, maybe next time I'll be the, the person that gets something nice. 
bad way to react, how would a bad grade to react be? <laughs> oh, if you broke the toy for them, that'd be a bad way to react, right? <laughs> that'd be a terrible way, but you know what? We do that. Right? Sometimes, like, we're just like mad because we didn't get something, and we forget that we're supposed to love them and not break the things that they got. So, you know, in this Bible reading we just heard, they said, like, when I was a child, I, I, spoke, I thought I was a child, and then I became an adult, and I put away those things. You know, sometimes you guys get it. Right? Sometimes we adults, we forget that we're like, wait, you shouldn't break the toy. That's not how you love people, right? Sometimes we actually forget how to love, and it's really important. And you guys like, have a really good sense of, like, mm. You love people by being nice and caring about them, even when maybe that time you're a little bummed. But you can about them. All right, you can think about that as you're getting ready for your your Valentine's this year. Like, how do you how do you show love to people that you're not maybe good friends with? Right at school, if you do Valentine's, like, how do you make sure that they know that they're special too, even if you never really talk to them that much? So something to think about. Okay. All right, well, let's have a prayer. Dear God, thank you for teaching us how to love, even when it's hard. Help us to remember that your love is perfect, and it's patient, and it's kind, and that when we love others the way you love us, our world is a better place. Amen. Thank you for coming up here this morning. I invite you to stand as we have our gospel back. <laughs> According to Luke, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O oh Lord. When Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that we've heard that you did in Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except for the widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them were cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of town, and led him up to the brow of a hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off a cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. 
This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace be with you all through Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord. Amen. Well, once again, I bring you greetings on this morning from Bishop Felix and the other 72 congregations that make up the La Crosse Area Synod. Congregations that you are in partnership and relationship with as members of the Synod and of the ELCA. Congregations who, like all of you, are often asking questions about which way Jesus is leading the church today and in how our world is going on, especially as you ask us all now when you're in the time of pastoral transition. Waiting, preparing, listening to where you are being led next. We are all on this journey together, rooted in God's love to lead us forward. Sometimes, though, following Jesus gets a little bit complicated. Especially when it brings up lots of emotions that can take some effort to work through. This is just this type of encounter that we're getting in our gospel reading here from Luke today. Jesus is in the synagogue teaching the people about what God's mission is. And he quotes from the prophet Isaiah. Stands up in front of everyone and reads this to them. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then finishes by telling them, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. You can almost imagine this moment of silence right after he says this. Everyone is just taking it in, letting it seep into their spirits, into their hope-ached hearts. Good news, release, recovery, freedom, the year of the Lord's favor, a vision of relief to the angst that they and that we all often find ourselves carrying day in and day out. Who doesn't want that? Now, this is fantastic news, the people listening conclude, especially as they are starting to put together that Jesus is a hometown boy. Naturally, they assume, this is going to mean that they, in particular, are going to reap the immediate and primary benefits from this. They've heard all those positive things. They've got these are grace-filled words. On the let down. Not so fast there. As soon as Jesus gets an inkling that this is where people's minds are going, they have a very literal come to Jesus moment. <laughs> okay, listen folks, says Jesus. This is good news, but you have to understand that it doesn't mean that you get first dibs because I grew up down the block. This is a message of good news for all people. Though, especially and particularly for people who are most often forgotten and left out. This is a message especially and particularly for people who would hear this message that God cares about them. And then they assume that based on all of their life experiences, well this message obviously isn't for them. This is a fantastic vision in which God and Christ brings relief to people who have been pained for so long without anyone looking in their direction. This is a message of relief for people carrying the heavy burdens of other people's expectations with no care for their real well-being. This is a message of hope for the hopeless, for people who we often believe are those people who are different than us people. Jesus includes people who are otherwise looked over, left out, assumed to be outside of God's concern. Which sounds great on first listen, 
until we're called out for assuming that that still necessarily has to mean us first. How can it be good news if someone else is cared for before my concerns and desires are cared for? What's the benefit of being part of the inside? Right? The neighbors who grew up just down the street from Jesus. If you don't get the home field advantage. It can be incredibly frustrating. Even off-putting to wrestle with. Especially when we feel that maybe our hopes are just tricks to lure us in. The people listening to Jesus change their tune quickly, going from amazement to absolute fury. So much so that they stand up, run him out of town, and try to throw him off a cliff. Well, that escalated quickly. But who hasn't felt the urge? to chase some unrealized hope off a cliff a time or two, though. Getting your expectations raised and your hopes heightened and then having them criticized or let down is unsettling, to say the least, and even angry or deeply painful. The vaccine is going to bring an end to this ongoing and heartbreaking pandemic that we're all, frankly, frustrated with and tired of. Yay! Omicron variant. That's it. Off the cliff. Go. <laughs> the completion of an election cycle that'll finally bring an end to the intensity of all of our political divisions that we feel. Hope for some calm to our relationships again. And then more and more division seeps into our bones and almost everywhere in life. Get off that cliff. Kids being back in school, finally, and then being sent home for quarantine. The family is able to get back together again for the first time in a long time, and those same arguments come up and put a damper on what was supposed to be a joyful time together. Or the Packers make it to the playoffs as the number one seed, and then they're out like that. Yes, we know what it's like to get excited and hopeful in so many ways and then find ourselves suddenly on the point of outrage. The feelings of disappointment, confusion, frustration, or embarrassment that you feel when things don't go as you wanted can cloud our vision and lead us to react in some destructive ways. Running Jesus off a cliff is not a healthy way to deal with public emotions. <clears throat> and then that letdown can get even more complicated when we think that it has to necessarily be all or nothing, right? Either my life has to be directly, positively affected, or it's actually bad news. And gosh, we can fall into that too. Now, we're not usually quick to put it in such blunt terms, right? If, unless I'm happy, I don't want you to be happy. We don't normally say that. But, but it does catch us up from time to time, doesn't it? If something may help others, but it doesn't help us directly, it can give us pause and make us ask questions like, why do they get something that I don't? Why are they getting what I want? A thought which comes to mind a little easier when the people who are receiving something are people that we may have already decided aren't deserving. That's why we've often ignored them in the past. And it's why Jesus is paying particular attention to them right now. He's saying, this is good news. It's good news for us all because it's bringing people into the wholeness of God's vision. But it's good news to them first. And it absolutely infuriates the people. How dare he come here proclaiming good news to the poor and release to the captives over there? They don't deserve it. They aren't who I would choose to care for right now. Take care of the hometown first, Jesus. And if you're not going to do that, get out of town. In fact, get off the cliff. 
Yeah. Have you ever found yourself reacting like the folks in the crowd when confronted with Jesus' teachings, though? Angered? Unsettled? Maybe ready to push Jesus or anyone pointing to these teachings off the cliff? I mean, it seems extreme. And yet we're in a tough time in our world, in our lives that have been so unsettled for so long. With the world changing around us so rapidly, it's easy to give in to those frustrations, to join the crowd yelling that if it's not going to benefit me, then it shouldn't benefit any. But pause for a moment before the anger, before that shift, before the calls for Jesus to get out of town. You remember how the people first reacted? They were sitting in wonder, in hope. You're sitting in the vision of a world where people are fed, all people. Where people who are used and abused find safety and calm and a sense of self-worth. Remember the joy and the silence that permeated the crowd when Jesus reminded them of the vision of a God who is making all things new, bit by bit, one person, one situation, one hopeless situation turned into a hopeful joy of time. Pause for a moment, and you remember that you saw a glimpse of God's promised future for all people. And we're excited. And when the crowd begins to chase that vision off a cliff and say that if it's not for me, it's not for you, well, pause when you remember that feeling you first got the hope. And you wish it for other people. Saying, if it's not for me, well, then I hope it's for you. That is what being a follower of Jesus is about. It's about catching the hope-filled vision of a world rooted and formed in love, reconciling us together, bringing wholeness to our broken world bit by bit, and looking around to find out how we, how we can be part of it, to share it, to spread hope rooted in God's love. Love that, as we heard in our second reading today, is patient, kind, not envious, boastful, or rude. Love that follows in the way of Jesus helps us to bear all things, believe all things, hope all things, endure all things. Love leads us to follow Jesus into the world to share, not to chase him off a cliff to keep that love small and Last year, the folks here at Christ through Welka made and gave away 123 quilts, 108 personal care kits, 116 school kits, and 467 baby care kits to give to Lutheran World Relief so that they could be distributed to people throughout the world. <coughs> people not here, but there. Being part of the vision Jesus said to bring comfort and care to people in need. And as a community, you have come together in worship again and again across political divisions and differences of opinions to worship together and be centered in Jesus' vision for our world. Even when, sometimes, as Jesus often does, even throughout Scripture, that might press up against our experience experiences in life or cause our heart rates to rise a little bit, like the folks in our crowd with Jesus. But you come together because you know that remaining together and hearing Jesus' ever-persistent teaching and vision actually helps us all to live more fully into what God plans for our world, for this congregation for what this congregation can and will do to share in the hope that the vision casts for the community, for our lives together. When our hopes align with Jesus' vision rooted in God's love, it opens our lives up to share in the creation of that hopeful vision. 
the hopeful promise that Jesus is proclaiming right now. It opens us up to follow Jesus, not over a cliff, but into the world where the work to care for all of our neighbors so that God's vision becomes reality is done. Amen. wonder in us. 
We pray for all who have been affected recently by natural disasters, especially those in Tonga as they continue to deal with the aftermath of the volcano, and for all people who have been affected by wildfires, especially those in Superior and Louisville, Colorado. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, who hears us all, we pray for people in need in mind, body, or spirit this day. We especially pray for Elvin and Helen, Ramona, Janice, Adam, Dale, Chad, Bill, Leroy, Jeremy, Lorraine, Virgie, <coughs> Carol, and the family of Gregory Bremer, as well as for all others whose names we hold in our hearts and are known to you. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Gather together all of our prayers, both those spoken and those that remain in the silence of our hearts this day, trusting that you call. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the Lord's Prayer as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. And this is Christ's table where all are welcome. You may be seated.
Once again, I invite you to stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen, keep, and preserve you now and to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Receive now this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.